short topic in supply and demand. The title of this topic is Consumer's Surplus. If you've ever been in business for yourself or ever thought about it, I think this is one of the more interesting applications that should make you kind of think. Here's what we're looking at. We're looking at a demand curve for our product, and we know some data from the behavior of the market. Here's what we're looking at right now. We have a demand curve and a price of $200, and at that price we sell 10 units per day. Let's say they're lawnmowers. We're a big uh, yard and garden dealership, and we sell 10 $200 lawnmowers per day. And we know that the demand curve's got a negative slope, like it should, and that if in fact we were to extend that demand curve all the way up to its intercept on the price axis, it would intercept at $350. Well, what's that telling us? It tells us, for example, that there was at least a buyer down here, buyer number one, who was willing to pay a lot more than $200 for that lawnmower. And buyer number two, was also willing to pay a lot more, maybe not as much as buyer number one, but more than $200, and so forth, all the way down. In fact, if this is 10 lawnmowers, the first nine lawnmowers, those buyers, were willing actually to pay a higher price. And so that money that they were willing to spend represents money going out of your business. Customers were willing to give you if you were just smart enough to know how to ask for it, to know what to offer them in exchange for it. That's the beauty of consumer surplus. Once we realize it as a business, we begin to think more creatively about what can we offer our customers that will encourage them to spend as much money as they were willing to spend when they came in the store. Now turn it around. If you or I go in the store, and this happens all the time, and we're expecting to spend, I don't know, $300 for a lawnmower, and here it is on sale for $200, we're delighted. And we walk out the door with a $100 consumer surplus, money we were willing to spend but we didn't have to spend it, okay? Let's see how this works with a little bit of simple math, okay? Now, the consumer surplus is one part of this, and then the total revenue is another. The total revenue is the price the seller receives times the number of units he sells. And so this rectangle in orange represents total revenue. And it is 10 units times $200. The seller receives $2,000 in total revenue. But remember, buyers, some of them, were willing to spend more money. And so now, if we take a look in, uh, let's do it in green, if we take a look at this now, the area of this triangle, that represents conceptually the maximum amount of money all of the customers were willing to spend when they came in the store. But because the price was fixed at $200 for every customer, many of them didn't spend as much as they were prepared to. So the area of this triangle is where we're really focusing, and the area of this triangle is, in fact, the consumer surplus. Now, how large is it, right? Remember the area of a triangle? One half, the base times the height. Well, the base is 10 units long. The height goes from 200 to 350, and we take that times one half. And so we have a consumer surplus here of $750. All right? $750. You made $2,000 today. That's really great. But $750 walked out your store that was willing to have stayed behind if you just knew how to go about getting it. That's what consumer surplus is all about. Now, I add one other term to this. I call it the total value received by the customers. The total value they received is consumer surplus plus total revenue. That's the total amount of money they were willing to spend. They were willing to spend not just the $2,000 that they did spend, but they were willing to spend another $750. So, in fact, the total value received in this instance is $2,750. Now that's at a, a conceptual extreme, okay, if you could capture the entire consumer surplus. In, the, in reality, we know we can't get it all, but can we get some of it? Think about when you go out and buy a car. If you and I both went at separate times onto a car lot, looked at the same identical car, talked to the same car salesperson, do you think we would walk out of there paying the same price? 
I don't think so. The car salesperson is trying to find out how much we're willing to pay. He's trying to extract as much consumer surplus from you and I as he can. That's his job. And it's not like he's beating us over the head. He's trying to get us, try to find out and get us to pay how, as much as we're willing to pay. And so the negotiations go on. If you go overseas to just about any other country in the world, out in the markets, there's constant haggling as people negotiate the price they're going to pay for a given product. Nobody walks up to something and says, oh, that's the price, I'll take four of them. You're supposed to walk up there and say, well, oh, that's too expensive. I'll give you half of that and negotiate back and forth. And what you're arguing over is the consumer surplus. All right? Lesson learned.